Hello everyone, this is Mumbo and welcome back to another episode on the Hermitcraft series, episode 98 and today we are starting things off in the nether once again because in today's episode we are actually going to be doing some pretty serious work over here. As you can see down at the bottom right here we have got a rather strange looking build. Now if you missed the previous episode of Hermitcraft we essentially had like a really chilled out episode. Not too much went on, we just did some resource gathering, we did some bit over at Iskal's place and we did a few other bits and pieces. Honestly, I can't really remember how much we did in the episode, but one thing that we did build is this spot right here. Now, the reason that we have this thing down at the bottom is because going up through the center of my base, we are going to have an enormous power beam, a huge, enormous power beam that is going to look like it's holding up my entire nether base. Or at least that's the plan, okay? That's the idea behind this thing, and I think it's going to be a hilarious project to work on, and it should end up looking really quite awesome. Guys, I'm trying to do something amazing here, and it's not really working. Oh no! Oh, I thought, I thought I just killed myself. But we did it! We actually did it! Well, what I was about to say was, was that I was trying to fly from the bottom of the nether up to here. We did manage to do it, but I honestly thought we were gone then. <laughs> oh my word. I am never flying in the nether again. Just, oh. So here it is. Now, I know I've shown you guys this a bunch of times before, but this is the power beam that we're going to be building. It's a bright red. It's 7x7 seven seven with some extra blocks on the outside. It looks pretty awesome. I mean, this is an exact size of how big the power beam is going to be in the nether. And just imagine the base going around the outside. I think it's going to look epic. Okay, I personally think this is going to look amazing. However, I think a lot of things are going to look amazing. Then I build them and they look disgusting. So, <laughs> I guess only time will tell. No, 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 no. Not my build. Not my build. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I am three layers in, three layers in, and this guy has just completely obliterated pretty much everything, and I can't kill him because I don't have a bow on me. That would have been fantastic if it hit him. <laughs> oh no! Oh, I hate the nether. I hate it. Why am I building something out of glass in the nether? I have not budgeted. <laughs> that sort of thing in the slightest In all seriousness that could actually be bad news because I think the hardened clay gets blown up as well I'm gonna quickly pop back to my base I'm going to pick up a bow and hopefully that won't happen again except as per usual I cannot find my insane bow. I have no idea where it's gone It doesn't appear to be in any of these chests, which is not a good sign. Spent a ton of time looking for it, unfortunately to no avail, so I am now looking through all of the bows here for a good one. That one's... That one's pretty good, but it doesn't have infinity. That one's not bad. That's a little bit more like it, but once again, doesn't have infinity. We might have to do a little bit of combining here to get the perfect bow. Or alternatively, you know, I could actually just pick up my bow that I seem to have put in this chest for no apparent reason. What planet am I living on? Oh, just my head. I worry about my brain sometimes. Right now, I would describe progress as being snail's pace slow. It is painfully slow at this point in time for a number of different reasons. Reason number one is, of course, the nether wildlife. Okay, the nether wildlife isn't particularly friendly to people like me. We've got a nether fortress over there, so that keeps chucking out blazes, and they keep absolutely blasting me. And then as soon as I hear a ghast off in the distance, as soon as I hear that sort of door creaky cat noise that's absolutely horrible, I'm all ears. And I completely stop building, and I look off in this direction, and don't make any progress on the build, which means that this little section right here has taken the best part of maybe 35 minutes to do 10 layers. 35 minutes to do 10 layers of a 7x7 space. I know that seems absolutely ridiculous, but A, I want it to be perfect. B, I want to still be alive. <laughs> I don't fancy losing all my stuff. So I guess I'll give you the next update in the next couple seconds. Finally, some good news on the way. I haven't been attacked by a ghast for around about 10 minutes now, which is, is pretty positive. I keep hearing them, but at the minute I'm not reacting to the noises. I'm only going to react when they actually make the firing noise. Might be a bad idea. I'll have to keep you updated on, on that one. Another piece of good news is that I've actually changed up my glass to block ratio. So now there is more glass than there is blocks, which means that there's less blocks to be picky about in the placing process, which not only makes the process faster, but it also means you'd be able to see more lava going through the center, which should mean that this thing will look just a tiny bit brighter. So I think it's about time that we actually take a look at this thing from the outside. So I'm going to pop down from here 
and let's spin it around and see what we have going on so far. Now, I'm a tiny bit nervous here because I haven't actually looked at this from the outside just yet. But here goes. Yeah. I mean... Yeah. It blends in with the background of the nether quite nicely, doesn't it? It's basically camouflage. Oh. I would have been better off making it blue or something. Um, well, it looks really cool, and I definitely think it will look a lot cooler once we have the lava going through the inside. And we also need to add the detail blocks on the outsides as well, so the little blocks that stop this thing from looking like a big cube. So that, that will be coming in the future, but I have to say, I had not predicted this red stained glass just basically becoming invisible in the nether. Totally didn't think of it. Such an idiot. The thing that really interests me about doing this sort of thing is it's supposed to be random and it totally proves the humans are really, really bad at being random. For example, I always place in the glass first and you can clearly see that there are some spots in this build that I prefer to place glass in, apparently. Like, for example, there, I went just through a massive streak of only placing glass there and look, there's just big, long streaks of the stuff going right the way down. I think there's an even bigger one on this side as well. Yeah, look, it goes right the way down there. How crazy is that? That's really, really interesting. There is a ghost! There is a ghost! I can't seem to get him, he's just out of range. Oh. Now, you guys have to admit, that was, that was some pretty good playing there by me, wasn't it? The final few blocks have just gone in place. I've literally just fallen off the power beam. <laughs> and we're about to take a look at this thing for the first time. And I think that looks awesome. I'm really, really happy with it. Yep, I think that looks great. That looks absolutely fantastic, but we cannot sit around on that because unfortunately there is still a ton of stuff that needs doing. The first thing that we need to do is we actually need to add the blocks going up the outside, which is going to be a very dangerous job indeed. And it's probably going to end up with the entire power beam being destroyed by ghasts. So prepare yourselves for that. Can you tell what I've done? Can you tell what change that I've made to this? No, probably not. What you probably don't realise is that there is a bunch of blocks on the front of this thing, but as mentioned earlier on, they're invisible in the nether. I mean, I don't know why I bother. As you guys know, at first I wasn't particularly convinced by the knobbly bits, but I have to say, now that I've done all four sides, it's actually starting to come together quite nicely. I'm quickly going to take out this scaffolding post right here and try my best not to fall into all of that lava down below. And as you can see... The end result is brilliant. It's made it so much better than it was beforehand. Now it almost looks like an organic shape, as in it almost looks like a power beam, as opposed to just a big square of multicolored blocks. Now, as you could probably notice, I've had a few ghast attacks, but this looks good. Good. Oh gosh, that's bad news, right? A ghast has just wiped out my piston door now. I mean, everything around here is just getting absolutely destroyed by ghasts. I don't even know what to say. Maybe in like a future episode, I should just build like a big ghast screen that will stop them from exploding everything. What's it even broken? So now it is the rather difficult and challenging job but of creating this same effect up in the nether roof without being destroyed by gas, without the gas destroying our current power beam, and most importantly, without being destroyed by gas. I don't know if I mentioned that yet, but I'm quite scared of being destroyed by ghasts at this point in time. Just want to say, guys, this is actually really, really hard to do this right now. <laughs> it's so difficult because obviously I've only got a limited reach. You can see that I've been trying my best to create a similar sort of design, but there's nowhere near as much room for expansion as I had down there. Look, you can see we've got like outstretching areas. It's, it's not happening so much up here. Look, we've got really short, stubby ones. I, I don't know what to say. I guess once it's done, I'll take a closer look at it and see what sort of thing is going on. But right now, this isn't particularly inspiring, is it? Everything is done, and I'm just in the process of removing all of our scaffolding here. And this is what it looks like up at the top. And you know what? That's actually a lot cooler than I was expecting. Yeah, that's worked out well. That has worked out well. I mean, it's obvious that I didn't really have that much room to work with. Okay, that's pretty clear. But it looks good. Let's pop down to the bottom and see how it looks from down here as well. 
Cool, excellent. In fact, I don't think we've actually looked at the base from this angle yet in today's episode. And I have to say, it's a good angle. <laughs> I like that angle a lot. Sweet, okay, so this thing... No, my, my piston door again! <laughs> He's blown up my piston door again! That is the second time in today's episode that my piston door has been exploded. I mean, what can a man do? This is why I hate the nether. People always ask me, they're like, Mumbo, why do you hate the nether so much? Why do you always complain about working in the nether? It's things like this happening. This doesn't happen in the overworld. You've got creepers, yeah, but they don't get you from a mile off. Oh, I've got to fix this up again. <laughs> Next up, we need to prep this thing up to be filled in with lava. So I've got to remove all of the blocks that are on the inside, which there are quite a few of them. Oh, I so thought I'd punch that zombie pigman then. <laughs> That's what I thought had happened. But I have to get rid of all of these blocks, and then we have to create a platform on the top and work out a way to drop all of the lava so that it's clearly visible down the sides. And to be honest, I haven't actually worked out how I'm going to do that just yet. Can I just say, before I do this, I'm well and truly prepared for this not working properly. But, in my head, if I just place in one lava on that corner, then it should go down both sides. Yes, that is a good sign. One lava in this corner, then we've got both sides there, and more lava in each of the corners. That does mean that we're missing each of the edges though, which... I could put the lava there. I could put the lava in the middle! That's worked! That has worked absolutely wonderfully, for once! For once in today's episode, that has gone perfectly to plan. Right, okay, let's cover up everything. Make sure that this is completely sealed off so that nothing gets inside there or I don't go back inside there. And let's clear out all of the scaffolding and move away from this area before it gets blown up by a ghast and the lava goes everywhere because that will make life extremely difficult. And there we go, guys! The power beam is done and now that it's fully lit up, it looks wicked! Oh no! <laughs> we missed the corners with the lava! You know what? I think that actually looks quite cool. I quite like it with the corners missing. Am I just making excuses for the fact that I'm too lazy to get lava and put it in the corners? Yeah, probably. I, I'm not even going to make excuses. I probably am, but I definitely think that looks pretty good. Let's take a look at it from some other angles. So here it is. The power beam is now all done and dusted, and I almost fell off the edge there, but this thing looks awesome. As I've said many times, really, really happy with this build. I think it's come together quite nicely. In the beginning, I wasn't 100% certain on it. In fact, in the beginning of the nether base, I wasn't 100% certain on it. But now that we have everything in place with all the extra rings, that made a massive improvement. This power beam is definitely the final part of it. And it's come together to look like something that's actually really quite special. So now what we've got to do is we have got a massive quantity of nether clearing to do right here. As you can see, there's a massive block of just nether rack underneath this thing, and it almost looks like the drone isn't actually flying, which, well, that's not good, is it? So we're going to have to wipe that thing out, and I'm going to try my best to do it nice and quickly. I have to say, there is something extremely satisfying about taking out large quantities of nether rack. It's just, it's hilariously good fun, even if it is completely destroying my pickaxe. And you have to be extremely careful because when you're flying through like this, mind your own business, suddenly lava comes out of nowhere. And because lava flows so fast in the nether, I've actually been set fire a couple times. So that's something to be wary of. I'm just running back into the nether hub so I can head off to the ender render to repair my pickaxe because as you can see, it's completely run out. And I got blasted by another ghast and it's destroyed my door for the third time in today's episode. The third time. So I think I'm just going to leave it for the time being. Until I'm finished working in the nether, this thing is going to stay looking like this. Has anyone actually ever watched these? I'm fairly certain I haven't. Bit of a terraforming update. I have cleared out a pretty massive area right here of netherrack. It used to go up to here and come down like this. And as you can see, I have wiped out a pretty ginormous area of the nether, to be quite frankly honest with you. But I seem to be treading in fairly dangerous territory right now. Because, as you can probably see... All of these blocks underneath me, there's like one or two blocks, maybe three or four where I'm standing right now. But yeah, we're in quite a dodgy spot at this point in time because I'm currently in the process of just wiping out the entire island. I've concluded that I don't like this part of the nether, so I'm getting rid of the whole thing. This entire area right here 
is going to be going. It's going to be quite a large project, and honestly, I don't know how much I'm going to be able to remove, but it's going well. It's going pretty well, except I am actually going to have to head off and repair my pickaxe again in the next couple of seconds. Oh my god, that was so close! Oh, I literally, I thought I was gonna then. Uh, my Elytra didn't activate when I was trying to jump from there to here, believe it or not. Okay, it wasn't a particularly dramatic jump. And I fell straight into there. Ooh, that was a puckery bum moment. Another very close shave. I just walked off the edge of that block there, thinking there were more blocks beneath it. It turns out there isn't. I am doing a much better job at this terraforming thing than I thought. I mean, we are missing quite a large quantity of the nether at this point in time. My pickaxe is on its way out for the third or fourth time of today's mining session. But as you can see right here, I have taken out a huge quantity of stuff. So originally, the nether rack went up to this level right here and then came down like this, went past all of this area and then dropped off down there. And the same thing happened off in this section here and I've taken out all of that. Now, that has been huge. That has been absolutely huge, but there's still just a tiny bit left to go down at the bottom here, which shouldn't take any time at all. I'm very impressed with how much we've managed to clear in today's episode. I don't know what happened. I think I just got into the swing of things and I was really finding it relaxing, clearing out all these blocks and I've just gone to town. I'd be lying if I said that ghasts weren't becoming a bit of a problem. As you can see, if a ghast attacks, uh, there's probably about a 1 in 4 chance that it's going to make a hole right the way through the ground that I'm standing on, which is a little bit scary. We're almost there, pretty much everything has been removed. Let's try our best to be super careful here and not mine the block underneath our feet. Okay, we're going to make our way back to this block right here. And there it is! Everything is now gone, so we can take this out, fall down to the bottom, and in case you're wondering why I decided to remove all of that space, it's because I wanted to look at my base from this angle right here. That's the one. <laughs> that is the one. Oh, it looks so awesome. That is absolutely perfect. Yep. Absolutely love it. I'm gonna take a screenshot of that one. That can be the thumbnail for today's video And I think I am done with the nether today I don't want to spend another second in here We're going to be popping back through into the overworld because there is one other really quick project that I just want to work on My elytra didn't activate again What is going on there? I don't understand what it is I think it's when I've just come through the nether or something like that but I died right the way next to the bat cave, so let's see if we can pick up all of our items. As per usual, I'm always stressed out by this because I have a tendency to lose my Elytra when I die from that sort of thing. So let's take a look. I think I've spotted them already. Hopefully I can get access to them nice and quickly. Right, okay, there they are, perfect. I've got the Elytra straight away. Let's pick up all the other stuff. I didn't actually have too much items on me, so I think... That just about covers it. I have no idea why that, that happens though. It's bizarre. And I've lost all 60 levels that I just had. But anyway, as I was about to say before I was rudely interrupted, this guy right here has been in our base for quite some time. I mean, he's pretty cool. He's called the Lagfather and he looks pretty great, but I think it's about time that we removed him. And it shouldn't take too long whatsoever because he's made out of snow and slime blocks, both of which can be removed pretty much instantly. So you know what? I think I'm going to do a super fast time lapse. Well, that was really nice and quick. That thing is now gone. It took the best part of about five minutes. So that has all been removed and we now have a clear space in the industrial district. This place is now looking cleaner, but I sort of missed the fella. So maybe we might have to construct some form of rabbit statue or something like that elsewhere in the base. But anyway, to round things up, in today's episode, we're actually going to be running off into the brown district because, well, I want to see how many diamonds I've got. Now, one thing that I will say is, is that the last time I checked this place was last night. So there has been around about 24 hours since the previous visit, which means that there is a chance that nobody has popped by and nobody has bought any books. In fact, there's a fairly high chance that that's about to happen 
So let's pop inside and take a look at what we have going on. Here goes. Not looking good. Not looking good. That doesn't look good. <laughs> that doesn't look good. That doesn't look good. That doesn't look good. And fantastic. Okay, so we haven't made any diamonds from our bookshop. How about we pop into the casino and see what's going on in there? Because I think last time we checked, there was 20 diamonds inside the system. So I want to check out if anyone's popped by. Perhaps someone might have won. By the look of things, someone has won. So there is a chance that we're actually going to have less diamonds. Yes, we've managed to make a loss in the casino as well. My word. All right, well, that's just terrible luck, isn't it? Nobody's bought anything from our bookshop and we've managed to lose diamonds by having our casino right here. So on that note, I think I'm going to end today's episode. I've had a ton of fun today. We built the entire power beam, which looks absolutely amazing if I do say so myself. We then got a tiny bit carried away with the terraforming and ended up taking out an entire chunk of the nether, which was absolutely huge. And we've also got rid of the lag father, which should mean that my base is now less laggy. But unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, that is all I've got time for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please sure to hit that like button. And if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This is Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later.